Rotator cuff tears in the shoulder are very common. There's somewhere between 250 to 300,000 surgeries every year for this problem. Now, during this surgery, we are sewing the torn rotator cuff tendon back to the bone where it tore off of. These are images from an arthroscopic surgeries. And here, this is a shoulder. The white is the rotator cuff tendon. And then in this image, we have marked out the edge of the torn tendon with the red stars. And then the green star is showing the exposed bone where that tendon has torn off of. And then this is an image showing the repair. Here you can see the sutures, and we've now repaired that tear. Okay, again, here's another surgical images. Again, this is a tear of the rotator cuff tendon. The red stars are outlining the edge of the torn tendon. Here, this tear is a little bit bigger. So the green star again shows the exposed bone and the blue star is actually showing some exposed cartilage from inside the joint because this tear is bigger and we can see into the joint. And then this is the repair and here you can see the sutures and that hole has been repaired. These sutures are meant to hold the tendon and bone together while that connection actually heals to each other. That tendon has to heal to the bone. And this occurs over the next few months after surgery. Again, the sutures are just holding it there. If that tendon does not heal to the bone, then eventually the sutures will fail and the repair will fail. The question is, what can we do to improve the biology of the tendon to heal to the bone so we have a successful repair? So one method that has been suggested is using something called PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma. So what is PRP? So essentially we draw some blood from the patient, we spin it in a centrifuge, and we concentrate down the platelet-rich plasma, which has growth factors and platelets that are concentrated. And then we inject that into the repair site, and studies have shown that this can help improve healing. In this video, I'll review some of the science that demonstrates and supports the use of PRP after rotator cuff surgery. Hi, I'm Dr. Edmund Kleeman. I'm an orthopedic surgeon here in New York. I specialize in sports medicine and arthroscopic surgery. Here's a meta-analysis of 12 randomized controlled trials with about 391 patients who were treated with PRP and compared them to 390 patients who did not have PRP, and this is after they had rotator cuff surgery. And during this study, they used MRI or ultrasound to follow up with the patients to check to see if the rotator cuff tendon actually healed. This meta-analysis found a significant benefit to those people who got PRP after rotator cuff surgery. So in the control group that did not get PRP, there was almost a 30% failure rate where their tendon either did not heal or there was some partial tearing. Whereas in those people who had PRP, only 17% had some incomplete or non-healing of the tendon. So that's almost a 50% reduction in the failure rate. So a significant benefit in this meta-analysis to using PRP. Now, after we take the blood and we put in the centrifuge and concentrate it, the question is, is how much does it need to be concentrated? Does it need to be highly concentrated or slightly concentrated? A meta-analysis with eight randomized controlled trials with 886 patients who had arthroscopic rotator cuff repair. And they found that those patients who had high concentration PRP had a almost four times higher likelihood of the tendon healing compared to the group that did not get the PRP. So again, tremendous benefit in this meta-analysis for those people who had high concentration PRP injection after surgery. PRP, the platelet-rich plasma, again is obtained after we centrifuge the whole blood and we take out the platelet-rich plasma. So you'll see normally blood is red after you get the platelet-rich plasma, that's the yellow, and we get rid of the red blood cells because we don't need it and some of the other products in blood that aren't needed. Now, the question is, is can we concentrate it further and get rid of something called leukocytes or white blood cells? Will that also help? And so here, there are different studies that have looked at it, and it's not as clear. A meta-analysis of about 1,000 patients found that the long-term odds of a retear were significantly reduced if someone used PRP, regardless of the concentration of these white blood cells or leukocytes. Let's wrap up this video and go over a few key points. Number one, it appears that PRP after rotator cuff surgery can improve healing of the tendon back to bone. Number two, higher concentration levels of the PRP seem to work better. And number three, probably more studies are needed to determine whether or not further concentration to remove the leukocytes or white blood cells is important or not. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you found it helpful. If you did, please click the like button below and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in my next video or in my office.